The Coral Sea had been the first sea battle ever where two fleets had engaged on the high seas without being in sight of one another and relying entirely upon aircraft to strike the enemy. The Americans were quick to master this new type of naval warfare and were ready to use it again at a later date. That date was not far away. On the 20th of May, 1942, Allied listening stations around the Pacific picked up a lengthy radio signal in code from Admiral Yamamoto to his fleet. The message was relayed to the United States Combat Intelligence Unit at Pearl Harbor and deciphered. It was revealed that the Japanese Navy was about to mount a powerful attack on the mid-Pacific atoll of Midway with a secondary diversionary attack on the Aleutians further north. The 4th of June and the United States fleet's main prey, the Japanese carrier striking force under Admiral Nagumo was zigzagging through dense fog completely oblivious of Fletcher's fleet lying in wait for them. In the early hours of the morning, they reached calm and clear conditions. At 0430 hours, Nagumo launched his first strike. 108 aircraft took off from the carriers to attack Midway. They were immediately spotted on Midway's radar. The Zero fighters appeared from behind the clouds and the island's defenses went into action immediately. Midway's fighters went up to engage the enemy. Considerable damage was inflicted on the airfield buildings and garrison, but the airstrip remained intact. A few transport aircraft were damaged, but most of the fighter and bomber aircraft were in the air and out of the way during the attack. As the fires burned over Midway, the extent of the damage was surveyed. Nagumo was now in a quandary. His first attack had not knocked out the airfield as planned. It was still operational. A second air attack was needed. The Japanese commander ordered his second wave torpedo bombers to be rearmed with bombs for another attack on Midway. At 0728 hours, 15 minutes after the commander had ordered his aircraft below, one of Nagumo's search planes spotted 10 United States warships some 335 kilometers northeast of the Japanese carriers. Ironically, this plane had taken off 30 minutes late that morning. Had it taken off on time, it would have spotted the Americans 30 minutes earlier and got the news back before the torpedo bombers had been sent below. If this had been the case, Nagumo would almost have certainly sent his aircraft against the United States fleet and the course of the battle and of the entire war in the Pacific might have been very different. 